This video is proudly sponsored by Newtype. Tools, accessories, model kits, these guys have it. Hop over to NewtypeHQ.com and use the link below to help this channel out for future builds. Hey, what's going on my dudes and dudettes and welcome back to another exciting build from the good folks from Bendai Japan. So, why don't we get started with the 144 scale high grade RX 105 Minoski flight system Gundam. From the feature length film, Mobile Suit Gundam Hathaway. And without further ado, let's get to it. Welcome back my dudes and dudettes to another unique build from the good folks from Bendai and if this is your very first time onto this YouTube channel, welcome! So before I get started and explain why I jump onto building the RX 105 Gundam, I need to give a huge shout out to Deus Ex Mecha. Now for the record, I did not have any interest in one to build his model kit, no interest at all, but after reading his heartfelt message and seeing tons of memes of the classic Dorito shaped Gundam, I thought to myself, you know, I'm not a really big fan of building high grades, but if I can take what I've learned from previous model kits and then interlock them together, I can actually do something pretty amazing with this unique Minoski flight system. So I am finally jumping back into the fray of building another high grade 144 scale RX 105 Gundam. Now at first glance, I was a bit hesitant to build this model kit because after looking at tons of pictures of the Penelope model kit, I didn't like that design at all, but this one right here is definitely a big drastical shift when it comes to a classic Gundam look. Love the bold shoulders, love the dynamic posing, and overall, I love the overall design aesthetic. Now on the first side of the box art, we get a nice shot of the RX Gundam in the front and back side showing its awesome standard pose, and at the same time, give a nice shot of the wing sections in the back, a small glimpse of two unique flight forms, the MS form and the flight form, while at the same time, give you a brief description of dynamic poses that you can actually put this bulky mobile suit in. On the other side, the box art gives you also a nice tight shot of the beam rifle and the dual wielding beam saber, while at the same time giving you a small shot of weapon compartments of hidden missiles that are underneath the skirt and also airs around the forearms and the knees. I just, I love that aesthetic of detail. So enough about that, let's take a look at what's inside the box. As always, you are happily greeted with the instruction manual, giving a nice standard look of the RX Gundam looking absolutely intimidated as hell, with the first page giving you a complete rundown of the runners, and the following page giving a nice glimpse of the two transforming features of this particular mobile suit, the MS form and the flight form, which I think is absolutely great, but to pull off those particular poses, you're going to need an actual Gundam action base. As for the following page, it gives you once again more standard shots that you would see on the promotion work on the box art, at the same time, more dynamic poses that you can put this guy with an action base, and a Nice little tie shot of the RX Gundam go up against the Penelope and the pilot himself, Halfaway Noah from the feature length film, Mobile Suit Gundam, Halfaway. As for the very bottom, more mobile suits to purchase from this particular universe, and another page gives you a complete rundown how to construct the wing section for this particular mobile suit. They're definitely broad, and at the same time, they could cause some issues for paint chipping and scraping, but it doesn't seem like it'll be a problem. Once again, more promotional work of dynamic poses, more shots of the weapon accessories, and a complete color guide if you choose to do some custom painting. Probably the one thing I like about this model kit, it gives you two different options of two different types of yellows and oranges. Definitely a big change for a different mobile suit. Now, let's talk about the runners. First, runners up are going to be your classic white runner pieces with a great deal of surface detail. This is really impressive for something that's a high grade. I haven't seen this in a long time, which is absolutely great. Now, probably one thing that's going to be really concerning is the hands. We do get pre-posable hands, but the, there's a great deal of surface detail underneath it, on top and underneath it, so it's definitely going to require some custom painting. Now, as for the shield, this thing actually has a great deal of surface detail, very reminiscent of Unicorn Gundam, but it definitely has an identity of itself, and I love that little aesthetic of detail. So, this is actually going to be really cool to do some custom painting. As for the next runners, you're going to get a handful of great runners for the beam rifle, as well as a nice shot of the wing section showing that nice little fan system that helps levitate the mobile suit when it's actually in Earth atmosphere. I love that little attention to detail, it's great. At the same time, more engraving parts of the shield, more parts for the skirt section, which is great, followed by more inner frame pieces for the knees and the legs and the arm, which once again has a great deal of surface detail, which I absolutely do appreciate for something that's a high grade. And then we're going to get two unique effect parts, a long bean saber and a short one. I imagine this is just a design choice, but I think that at the same time this kind of helps make things a little more possible for dynamic poses. A nice shot of the wing sections in the back, as well as the forearms, and this unique dark blue pieces. Now, everyone has particularly painted this mostly with a bright blue. I'm definitely going to stick with a dark blue skin like what's seen here. And 
And then here comes a nice unique part, the unique orange and yellow runners. Now these particular runners are the classic gold runners. And then these are these bright pumpkin orange runners, which some people don't like. Me personally, I think they're fine. And then wrapping up with a nice classic red pieces for the Gundams. Now, lastly, we need to talk about the sticker decals. This is absolutely great for someone that's doing a beginning build of their very first Gundam, which parts that are lead to the shield, parts in the vent, as well as part around the feet and the shoulder blades, which is great. But since the eyes are gonna be a big concerning part for this particular mobile suit, I am definitely gonna do something customized to make those guys look really cool. But if these stickers aren't your thing, I would really recommend you do some research on eBay and look for the water slide decals that can absolutely make this guy look absolutely amazing. But by all means, I'm pretty sure you can find these water slide decals for under $6 on eBay. So it's very affordable. So without further ado, let's get started. So as always, before I get started in building this particular mold suit, I need to take a step back and evaluate which areas I'm gonna tackle first. So right off the bat, this particular mold suit does not have any clear runners. So this is definitely gonna require a lot of finessing and a lot of creativity to make these areas really pop out. Now the one area that definitely stand out the most to me in the film is these little vent sections underneath the shoulder blades of this particular mobile suit. In the film, there's a little bit of light peeking through those areas because they're like vents. So what I wanna do is take some fiber optic light that I used on my previous build and stack three on top of three on, on top of one another and then line them up there perfectly each on each side. Now, this particular technique is a bit experimental, but not as experimental as putting LED lights inside the head. Now, why exactly am I saying that? Because this particular mobile suit does not come with any clear runners. So how am I gonna pull off this effect? Actually, the answer is very simple. I'm gonna end up using the clear runners that you would use for the beam sabers. Now, when I do this, I'm actually gonna be using the actual stickers as a template to put over the clear plastic and then cut that out with an X-Acto blade. This process is a bit time constrained, but at the same time, it's actually very easy to pull off if you do it correctly. So when you do this, don't rush it. Just follow through with it nice and easy and you should have no problem. Holy cow, that came out better than I expected. So after much success, I managed to hollow out just enough plastic to actually put in 
two Pico LED lights so this is going to make this guy look really cool. So this guy is ready to be painted. Now the biggest challenge is going to be actually cutting out these particular yellow runners. Now I'm going to be following the groove section what I, you see here to cut out that section out just evenly enough. So that way I can sneak in three stacked on stack fiber optic lightings to make this area pop out. Now you could use some methods to diffuse it because the LEDs that are going to be installed in here are going to be very bright. But I think the method I have here will do just fine. Now I need to get these guys ready to be painted.
All right, now that the LEDs are finally installed inside the head, it's now time to install the eyes. Now, when I put the eyes onto this particular mobile suit, I'm going to slightly defrost it to the way where it doesn't create like a big sparkling effect on your camera. I want to diffuse in a way where it looks nice and clean and consistent. I don't know what I'm missing, but you're missing all along, along. I'm just begging you to listen, can you listen to me at all? Oh. I'm sorry, I just don't get why you're caught up in this mess, but I'm not trying to guess no more. And I'm sorry, I don't know why you're pushing me to the side. I just can't handle your pride no more. It's like an evolution in your brain, burning like a fever that you can't contain. So this time around, I'm going to try something drastically different for the thrusters. Instead of sticking a chip LED light in front of the thrusters, I'm actually going to diffuse it, but actually make it light up accurately by putting Evans Design side fiber optic in front of the LED lights. This is going to help prevent the twinkling, but at the same time, making the glow effect consistent. Alright, now that I got the hard part done, it's now time to install the Pico White LED lights into the shoulder blades. And as you can see here from my first experiment on doing it on one side, it absolutely is great. You have it right and snug into that particular cavity space, and that should be sufficient to illuminate that LED light just the way how I want it. Now, like I mentioned before, they are going to be a tad bright, but thanks to the nice stacking up between one of the fiber optic bodies on top of one another, it should be enough to create enough light diffusion. Now, the question when this particular method, how am I going to stack these guys one on top of another? Just use some Bob Smith super glue to stack up on top and then once you get them at the right kind of angle then you're going to try your best to line it up just perfectly on these particular designated areas and then cut them off. This process is very lengthy but at the same time the results are absolutely worth it.
Now, this next part is tricky, and then once again, it's absolutely optional. In the film, there is a brief scene where you actually see this area is illuminated with a bright green, much like to show that it's in flight mode. Now, I would use this particular green runner to make that effect look great, but I don't want this to pop out. I still want that cavity space to be dark enough to look just fine when it's in standard, but when an LED is right behind it, it'll illuminate the way just the way how I like it. Now, the big challenge is actually illuminating the cap sections to make the thrusters glow. What I basically did here is I drilled these small little pin drill holes in a perfect line and then since I got it the way how I want it and then I'm going to be actually drilling that section out with the Dremel and then smooth it out with an exacto blade. Alright my dudes and dudes, we have reached the part of the mobile suit that is actually the hardest but probably by far the most satisfying part that you can really pull off if you do it correctly. Now, my first experiment, which I actually had to purchase another model kit, is I was trying to put a fiber optic lighting behind the wing section to illuminate those areas like you would see in the movie. After much fail attempts at trying to get it nice and clean and consistent, I then had the bright idea why don't I just use the fiber optics on top of the surface and then bend it at an angle to my choice and make it look just like how it's seen in the film. This process is actually very, very delicate, but at the same time, it actually gives you great results. So as you can see here, I'm going to be pre-drilling some holes to where the actual fiber optic hole is going to be positioned when I bend it. And then once I get that done, and then I'm going to get these guys ready to be painted and then ready to go for installation.
All right, now that I got that part done, it's now time to tackle the one area that I'm actually excited to work on, and that's gonna be the weapon accessories. For the shield, I'm gonna be sticking with the classic Tamiya flat white, but areas that have a great deal of surface detail, I'm gonna be mixing between a dark gray and a light gray to make it pop out. Now, actually, the, for the surface damage, I'm gonna give a sense that this particular shield got damaged from a beam rifle to make it look really cool. Now, for the beam rifle itself, my original plan was actually to put in two LED lights into each section, both on each individual scope, but after giving it much thought, I didn't want to have one part of the mocha that had like a permanent hand glued onto that one section. So instead, I'm going to be hauling out those areas out and putting in my own clear pieces. Now, this particular clear runner is actually from an action base from my previous build like almost five or eight months ago. So this particular clear runner is actually going to be super helpful for areas around the scope as well as areas around the wing sections to illuminate them to make it look like they're on with a bright green and other key areas around the model kit. Now this process is a bit lengthy, but if you get the measurements just about right, you can still plot the effect and make it look really cool. The idea is actually trim it off just enough where it makes it look good. And then once it's done, I'm gonna be hitting the front side of the particular clear runner with a metallic gold, and then follow on the opposite side, I'm gonna hit it with a Tamiya clear orange. This is actually gonna make the effect give a nice like reflective effect, but as for the clear green, Green runners. I am going to actually be using an effect parts from my double quanta from eight months back on my previous kit bash. So once again, much like how I did the eyes, I'm gonna be using the existing sticker decal and then place it on top of the clear runner. And then once I get the measurements just right, I'll be able to position this particular clear runner underneath the barrel to still pull off that awesome look.
All right, my dudes and dudettes, we have finally reached the part of this mobile suit that you guys have actually been super excited to see, and then that is actually installing fiber optic tubing on both wing sections. Now, I did actually had an actual fiber optic tubing in this particular blue section, but I opted not to show in the video because it wasn't really necessary. The big area that's necessary is actually installing LED lights in both wing sections, as well as the thruster in the back. Now, this process is going to be extremely delicate because you're working with a limited range of tubing. Now, when you do this, line it up just fine, right along the side of the thruster and then cut it off at the very end with your snippers. Then once you get it cut off with your snippers, then gradually start snipping some of the areas off with an exacto blade so you can get a nice snug fit. Sunflower. All right, my dudes and dudes. So as you saw previously in the video, this part, I actually took the liberty of drilling pre-dribble holes so that way I could sneak in the fiber optic in to lock it into place. Now, when you're working with this particular fiber optic, this is where it gets very difficult. Now, these particular fiber optics are a bit stiff, so towards the end of these particular fiber optics, you wanna grab a good pair of snippers, or this particular, I'm using my wire cutters, and just gently, gently bending the edges to the point where I actually can work with it. If you bend it too fast, you're gonna snap the fiber optics and you're gonna start from zero. So when you're doing this, position it to an angle, once again, grab it, bend it just enough to where you can work with it, and then gradually just keep doing the same thing over and over again. You're gonna actually have to keep this consistency flowing for the next part of this particular build. It is difficult, but at the same time, if you do it just right, you're gonna get phenomenal results.
Woo! This was quite an adventure. We managed to get everything done for the upper body. In many ways, if you wanted to stick with the torso section, you're pretty much done with this model kit. But since we have the legs left, let's get this part done. Alright my dudes and dudettes, as this video is wrapping up, I want to share with you guys my thoughts and impressions about this model kit. So, first and foremost, thank you so much Deus Ex Mecha for recommending this kit to me. I didn't have any interest to want to build this kit after I read your letter on Instagram, so thank you so much for the recommendation, man. This was an absolute blast to build. I was originally hesitant not wanting to build this kit, wasn't much of the design aspect of it but it was more of just how expensive it was for a high grade you know high grades are usually the more affordable re readily purchasable model kits so this one was very expensive due to the the massive runners that come with this particular build but the designs of this particular high grade are very much on par with you we could get for a master grade which is great minus the fact that there aren't any clear runners so that's the biggest challenge with this particular build if you want to put custom LED lights, which you can, you're going to be extremely limited to put LED lights in the thrusters. And if you want to put in a static pose, then you're done. But if you want the eyes to glow and the thrusters and then the, the V fins on the shoulders to really, really pop out, that's among itself is a challenge because you got to make sure you cut the runners in a specific size, not too big, not too small. At the same time, is it sufficient enough to go with this particular route? What's a proper LED to put in there? Do I put a, a green or a blue? And for the thrusters, I go for a cool white or a yellow. There, there's just so much thinking that goes involved with this. It was just fun. You would think it would be really stressful, right? But shockingly enough, it was actually a lot of fun. And I love the brainstorming process when it comes to doing a custom build, man. It's absolutely fun. So I had a blast. Super, super fun. I enjoy building the space Dorito. <laughs> it was great. Now, I know a lot of you guys are asking yourself, am I going to build the Penelope? Sorry to say this, but I'm going to have to give it a hard pass. I do think it's a very unique, very drastic art shift on, on how a classic Gundam looks. But I don't like the space chicken design. At the same time, I don't think I would generally have a lot of fun building it. You know, I I feel that the, the design choice that was very drastic, and at the same time, a little too distracting. You know, at, at least with this particular mobile suit, it just works. You know, the broad shoulders, the thick legs, and and the the wicked looking two double V fins. Love it. Mwah, chef's kiss. Love it. Now, I know the big question you guys are asking yourself, is it worth the purchase? Do I build the Space Chicken or do I build the Space Dorito? And for me, it basically boiled down to the heartwarming letter I got from Deus Ex. I never imagined something that would impact me so hard to the point where I felt obligated to build this awesome mobile suit. So if situations were different, I know I wouldn't even bother picking up either of these mobile suits, but 
seeing how the movie came out, seeing how the letter came out at the right time, I just felt obligated to build this particular mobile suit. And I hope you guys give it a shot yourself. It was fun, you know? I hope you guys give it a shot. And with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this long video. Thank you so much for the likes, comments, and subscribes. And if you guys are new to this channel and you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to this channel. And I will see you dudes and dudettes on the next build.